report because she had the most events. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to highlight, if you weren't there with us for Hispanic Heritage Day, Patsy had a wonderful show at halftime that uh, the Cardinals have picked up again for this coming fall. You're hoping? You've done two years already. And it was really a sight to see this new wildcat walk. It was right near our tent. And Patsy had all the folklorico girls there <laughs> with the team walking through, so it was different. It was different. It was very nice. And they were looking like, oh, okay, mariachi and folklorico. So it was very good. And Janice and, and everyone, all the committee chairs, thank you so much for all your hard work. You all know if you've served on this board before, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, Oscar knows, and he's always telling us, you guys. <laughs> but as volunteers, they put in tons of hours for these events. So we need to give all the chairs a big hand, too, for all their hard work. Um, next, in our pages, we have the reports by page. We've got um, membership. Chris? And John? Oh, good. I'm going to say, feel free to keep getting food and drink. Okay, so membership. Um, as of June 13th, we had 236 members, but I also have to apologize to those of you who did not find your name on the list. Um, that's part of my report, and I'll kind of explain why. Um, we did increase in lifetime memberships this year, so that's good. Um, we have 116 general members and 74 joint memberships, um, 16 associate members, 29 recent graduate members, and I'll talk about those right now too and five student members. In total, we collected over $9,000 in uh, dues and donations. So that's actually an increase from last year, which is great. For next year, it was a challenge for this year, but we didn't make it. For the next year, we would like to reach 500 members. So I would like to ask all of you guys and your help in recruiting members. Direct them to our website. Our membership form is on our website. Um, and it's easy, just have them fax it back or email back the form. We accept credit cards now. Hopefully within this year we will also have an online system if uh, the people that are in charge of the websites will allow us to do so. Uh, that's something that we don't currently have, but hopefully we will be able to uh, recruit members online. So for those of you that know, know people who are alumni that are not members or that are alumni at heart or whatever the case may be, please ask them to join. Um, what else? I, I do want to thank Sylvia for all of her hard work at all of our events. She's the one that mans the membership table and every she's the person that's there all the time for me when it comes to membership stuff at events and recruitment, so thank you very much. Um, this year, we actually, or recently, we transitioned into a new database. Our database is now part of the U of A Foundation, so we have everyone's up to date. Uh, address information, phone numbers, email addresses, and in that transition, I'm sorry to say that some of you guys got lost. So if that, I, they're not that many. I really thought I had accounted for everyone, but there's a few people that did not find their names on the list outside, and if that's you, please let me know. And um, some of you guys, we have your names. I think Patsy took your information, and I will make sure and get those straightened out. Um, uh, we also, a big change for this year, before we, our memberships, membership renewals used to be on a calendar year basis. So regardless of when you um, signed up, your term always expired or your membership always expired on December 31st. Starting this year, that is no longer the case. Um, your renewals are now on an anniversary basis. So if you sign up on May 5th on Cinco de Mayo this year, you will expire next not you will expire, your membership will expire. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> your membership will expire next May 4th. So, um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, if you expire within the year, sorry. <laughs> Our condolences. Um, what else? 
We also created new membership cards and new lifetime membership cards. Um, those have not been sent out yet, but they are printed and ready to go. So for those of you who are lifetime members, we, you will get your cards soon. <coughs> um, what else? This, oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I forgot something. Chris, how much is a lifetime membership? A lifetime membership is $500. One-time payment. Um, it is all non-tax deductible just because of their membership dues and not a tax deductible gift. But um, on the membership form, actually I'll go through the different membership levels. Lifetime is $500. General members are $35. So anyone that's alumni or that has over 29 units of credit at the university. Uh, joint is any two people. Um, that one we haven't I haven't actually decided if both of them have to be alumni. As of now, you don't have, both have to be alumni, but one of them does. Um, associate is for those non-alums, and that is $20. I'm sorry, and joint is $60, so you save 10 bucks. Uh, associate is $20, student memberships are $10, and recent graduates are waived for their first year. After that, they become general members or joint, or whatever the case may be. So where's my report? So this year, at the Chicano Hispano Convocation, uh, Socorro allowed us very graciously to give out these cards as the graduates came off of the uh, stage. They went on stage and they were sashed by the president. And we gave out these cards that have a little code in the back. And they scanned their code with their smartphones. It was very high tech of us this year. They scanned their codes with their smartphones. And it takes them to a special website that's just for them where they entered their name, address, information, no payment because their first year was waived anyway, and they became members. I didn't get that high of a return as what I expected, but you try it once and hopefully next time I learn and do something better. But we also gave them these keychains. The keychains are available. There was one outside. They come in these little nice boxes. They're $5 if any of you guys want one. But they are very nice keychains. So keep, keep a lookout for those. So that was part of my recruitment strategy for this year. Um, what else? The membership benefits package that I announced last year, unfortunately, did not get, um, did not become alive this year. We were just so inundated by everything that was going on on the board this year and all our different projects that I did not, we did not have the response that we wanted. So I will actually ask all of you guys also to help us if you have time. Um, what we want to do is give members a, how am I going to phrase this so it doesn't come out wrong. We want to give something to our members in return. Um, right now the Alumni Association offers benefits. The Hispanic Alumni does not offer, offer currently benefits for our members. So we hope to have a benefits package that would offer you discounts to different uh, businesses around Tucson or whatever, uh, discounts, promotions. So if any of you guys have restaurants or um, any kind of business or relatives or friends or acquaintances that you think might want to participate, um, we have a benefits package information um, packet that are, is available to everyone that you guys can get from me or from any or from Sylvia or from anyone on the membership committee or the board that um, outlines what we will do for you in return um, for your services to our members. So hopefully by next year we're looking for a co-chair or if anyone wants to take on that responsibility and co-chair that with us, with me and Sylvia, and take on the responsibility for putting that benefits program together, uh, let us know. Um, uh, this year we hope to have more exciting events. We had our first game watching party this year. It was a huge success for those of you that were there. It was a lot of fun. Um, we got together at Sam Hughes' place at Championship Grill and to watch one of the um, U of A games. So we hope to have more of those next year. I already have volunteers to run those for me next year, and hopefully they'll be just as successful. Um, and we want more tournaments, actually, for, or not more tournaments, I'm sorry, more events just for members. And we continuously are thinking of different ideas to bring our members um, to say thank you for your guys' support. I think that's it.
quickly. I'll be short. I don't have a whole lot to report, but uh, over the last year or so, UAHA has undergone kind of a rebranding you know, with the help of the Alumni Association. Um, so several new logos were created that kind of emphasizes Hispanic alumni a little more. So at least when you get, when you see our name and website, or when you see our name in print, you could just, you know it's from the UA Hispanic Alumni, and no confusion that. Is this from the Alumni Association, or is this from the Hispanic Alumni, who is this from? Uh, the Alumni Association also helped us launch a new website. It takes some getting used to, but at least it's more flexible and it's more dynamic. It allows us to update it more frequently, so uh, keep your eye on that. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have time this year to do no beef yet, so that's probably why you guys are anxiously waiting for that in the mailbox. That's why, that's why you guys haven't seen it, but I do have content for the next issue that I'm going to pass along, and I do want to urge the club and the board to keep that a priority. I mean, it's a way to reach out. It's a way to reach out to not just members, because that goes to all alumni, not just our, our uh, 300 members or so, 500. Can you speak a little louder for us? Sure. Sorry. Better? Um, what I was saying is that I want to urge uh, you all how to keep noticias in mind and keep it keep it a priority to print out um, two times a year, three times a year, uh, you know, as, as possible. Um, people like seeing that. People like having that on their coffee table. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully, somebody out there can volunteer to take that on. <laughs> Uh, what else? Um, as Chris said, we've become more technologically advanced. Uh, we made our, our way into the social media with our Facebook page that uh, Chris actually manages, and he told me right now that we have 666 people liking our Facebook page. So if one of you has a smartphone and has Facebook, please like our page, because we don't want to stick with that number. Uh, <laughs> What else? We have our, our listserv with 308 subscribers. Um, again, it's a good good way to communicate. It's cheap. It's free. Um, that's all I got. My report. Thank you. Be ready. Great. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Lorenzo Chavez. I'm actually the co-chair for the Awards and Recognitions Committee. I'm filling in for JJ Rico. Um, basically what our committee is responsible for is two main events. Um, the first being the May Luncheon, luncheon um, which takes place in May, and it recognizes two outstanding um, graduating students and two outstanding graduate students. Um, each of the recipients received uh, $500 um, award recognition, and they're really recognized for above average scholastic ability, citizenship, leadership, and promise for the future. The other uh, event that we're responsible for hosting is um, the annual meeting, uh, the annual awards meeting, which is tonight, which is taking place, in which we recognize um, two members of the Hispanic alumni community um, who have really demonstrated, uh, uh, demonstrated unique, um, Outstanding service and loyalty to U of A Hispanic alumni for um, two years, either in the community or within the board itself. Um, so really, I'm kind of new to the board, but um, JJ and I have been working together to revamp um, the, selection and the selection process and develop um, a set of processes so that way we can hand it off to the next board members who chair the committee. That's it, short and sweet. And, and we made it a short year for you because Carlos and Ray so graciously accepted early. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>